We are in Modena at the Festival of Philosophy. And we are here with Professor Andrei Linde. Andrei Linde is one of the most important cosmologists of our time. He is one of the authors of the theory of inflation that's, that has solved, as uh, we will soon see, several problems of the Big Bang theory. He worked in the uh, USSR until uh, 1989, when he joined a research group at CERN in Geneva. In 1990, he became professor of physics at Stanford University, where he works now. The first question, Professor. In the 70s, you proposed the theory of inflation that is now generally accepted as an essential chapter of modern cosmology. What do you mean by inflation? Well, strictly speaking, it was in the beginning of 80s. Um, uh, theory of inflation describes the stage of very, very rapid, exponentially fast expansion of the universe in a kind of vacuum-like state. It was not really empty. It was filled with some special type of energy, but it did not contain any elementary particles flying around, or even if they were, uh, their importance was very limited. And on this stage, universe expanded very fast, exponentially. This rapid expansion made the universe huge, made the universe flat, which means parallel lines do not intersect. It made the universe also very uniform, so that it is approximately the same to the right and to the left of us, and solved some other problems of uh, cosmology, and also explained how the galaxies have been formed due to some uh, well, uh, growth and stabilization of quantum fluctuations produced during inflation. Why did you introduce uh, this concept? Which problems of the Big Bang theory are solved by inflation? Um, inflation was kind of introduced several times. First time it was Alexei Starobinsky in Russia. He introduced a model which has all properties of a good inflationary model, except for it was not quite clear why it is necessary and it was a bit complicated. Then Alan Guth in the United States introduced a model which uh, had a very, very clear motivation and the goal of it was to solve uh, several cosmological problems which I just described. The only problem with the model was that it didn't work. Uh, and he knew that it didn't work. And a year later, after he proposed it, he had written a 78 pages paper proving that it's impossible to improve his scenario, <clears throat> so that's what I did. I improved this scenario, and the goal was to uh, well, solve many uh, cosmological problems uh, which I just mentioned before, like, for example, why the universe is so big and why it is so uniform. Inflation is uh, connected to the presence in the early universe of a scalar field, as, we, as uh, you have mentioned. It is a quite abstract object. How can we imagine this field? In which way could it develop that extraordinary, extraordinary expansion that is inflation? Um, in scalar field, in fact, is the simplest of all fields known in nature. And the fact that it is simplest <laughs> makes, paradoxically, it's difficult to understand. I spent two years walking my dog in the forest, thinking about it, and then now I think that I more or less understand what we are talking about. <clears throat> but the simplest analogy is you have 220 volt in the socket, right? Electrostatic field, okay? So if it were just 220 everywhere and no zero nearby, just 220, all over Italy, 220, you would say, well, I do not see it, I do not feel it, there is no electricity there, uh, it's just like a vacuum state, okay? So scalar field is something like that. So you can live in it, you walk through it, 
you move through it, you do not feel its presence, but it may have energy which drives expansion of the universe. And it may also change properties of elementary particles, which is the role of the Higgs field, which was recently discovered at, uh, uh, at CERN. One prediction of the inflation model is that given the fact that there is an inflationary domain, it will increasingly produce other inflationary domains without end. But was there a beginning to all these inflations? This is how they say in the United States, this is a $64,000 question that goes back to some TV shows where the last question was, they'll give you $64,000. Now, um, we do not really know how the universe started. We have some ideas about it. Uh, inflation helps to do the rest. Once the universe started, uh, inflation makes it humongous. And then uh, the new, well, creation of new parts of the universe uh, uh, continues uh, forever. So the universe is kind of immortal in the future. We still need to solve the problem of initial conditions in the universe. We have some ideas. These ideas usually involve quantum cosmology, which is a very, very complicated science. It may be so that our standard way of thinking about the origin of the universe is simply incorrect. We are thinking about everything as if everything is like classical in nature. By that I mean, I am present, I am looking, I always have some, my watch and I know what time is. I always have some rulers which may, may measure dif distances and I know what distance it is. But near the moment when the universe was born, all watches were broken and all the rulers were bending like that. So in the situations like that, we need to learn how to ask questions about the beginning of the universe, which nobody could ever see, and the time which nobody could ever measure. <laughs>